Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Microsemi Space Forum 2017. I'm Ken O'Neill. I'm Director of Marketing for Space and Aviation at Microsemi. Uh, so on behalf of uh, all the Microsemi presenters, Microsemi in general, and all of our partners, I want to welcome you to this uh, Space Forum event. It is a web based event, not a live uh, in-person event, obviously. This is the first time we're doing this format, so we would very much welcome your feedback uh, as, uh, as the event progresses and, and at the end of the event. So to get things started, I want to uh, just quickly uh, run through the agenda for the day. Uh, we're starting here uh, with a quick introduction with myself. Uh, then Min Win will uh, give us an update on RTFPGAs. Uh, Dr. J.J. Wang will give us an update on radiation effects in uh, RTFPGAs, and then we'll go on a 30-minute uh, break. Uh, during that break, we will be streaming out video content from uh, our partner companies and also some, some video content from Microsemi as well. And then we come back after the break, uh, 10 o'clock uh, with Chris Hart uh, going through uh, space, power, and point-of-load solutions. Uh, and then Brian Wilkinson will join us and he'll be going through specific power uh, supplies for the RTG4 FPGAs. We'll take a one hour lunch break. We will have more uh, videos being uh, broadcast at that point. Uh, and then uh, Ashley Pollock will join us at 12.15 uh, going through uh, high precision frequency and timing. Uh, Dorian Johnson will then come next with uh, mixed signal uh, and analog solutions for space. Uh, then we'll have uh, Hisham Belhaj here to go through uh, some timing solutions uh, for RTG4 and specifically achieving timing closure uh, on uh, the RTG4 FPGAs. We'll then take a break. Uh, more videos will be broadcast at that point. Chris Hart will then join us again. Uh, and he will go through next generation uh, power discrete devices. Uh, the final presentation of the day will be myself and Hisham, and we're going to cover uh, a, a space applications focus where we talk about how all the different products that we've talked about throughout the whole day come together uh, in terms of providing solutions and, and an ecosystem uh, for development. Uh, we'll, we'll end the day with a Q&A session uh, and then end the conference, uh, hopefully on time, around about 4 o'clock Pacific time. So uh, just a quick overview of Microsemi. Obviously, you're here, uh, so you're, you have at least some familiarity with uh, Microsemi as a company. So I'll just give you a quick update on, on where we are. Uh, we obviously provide solutions that are highly differentiated, uh, differentiated in many different ways in terms of uh, performance, uh, power, reliability, and security. Uh, from a financial point, uh, point of view, the company is uh, in, in very secure footing. Uh, our revenue has been growing significantly, and that, of course, gives us the ability uh, to maintain uh, our legacy of innovation uh, with regard to new product introductions. Uh, the products that we have uh, span the range of uh, digital FPGAs and uh, ASICs, uh, timing uh, and optical networking products, uh, mixed signal and RF products, switches, uh, FIs for networking, uh, storage controllers, and of course, discrete semiconductors. The products that we have are aimed uh, towards four specific uh, application areas. Aerospace and defense, of course, the, the one that's of most interest uh, for the audience that's here today, and you can see some of the Larger customers that we do business with uh, at the bottom of the chart, of course, the range of customers is much wider than that. Uh, just some of the largest ones are, are listed there. Uh, we also support uh, the communications market and interact with many of the large companies there. Uh, data center and industrial are the other uh, market areas that we serve. Specifically for space applications, uh, we have a, a, a very strong heritage of supporting space. Uh, our product line uh, has been used in space applications for 60 years, and uh, really since the beginning of the space industry. Uh, over that period of 60 years, we have a strong heritage 
of uh, innovation, of quality and reliability. Uh, our product uh, solutions portfolio is very broad. Um, I've kind of hinted at that. I'll give you some more examples of that before we uh, hand over to the, uh, uh, the other presenters here who are going to give you much more detail than I'm going to give you on the, the breadth of the product portfolio. Uh, we continuously innovate. Some of the things you'll hear about today are new products that are uh, coming to the marketplace or have just entered the marketplace and are going through uh, qualification. And we have, as I said, a 60-year heritage, and it's our intention to continue to support the space industry for longer than a, an additional 60 years. So we're really here for the long run. So the space product portfolio uh, breaks down into four distinct areas. Uh, there's the radiation-tolerant FPGAs, uh, our heritage there with uh, the RTAX, the RTSX product families, uh, and their predecessors goes back uh, into the 1990s. Uh, what you're going to hear about today uh, is more detail on the latest uh, space FPGA, the RTG4 product line. Uh, we also have uh, mixed signal uh, integrated circuits and a lot of innovation going on there, uh, bringing significant advantages in size, weight, and power through more tightly integrated solutions. Uh, we have a long heritage also in space qualified oscillators and timing products, um, things like ovenized uh, quartz oscillators and hybrid voltage, hybrid voltage controlled oscillators, as well as atomic clocks, uh, cesium and rubidium atomic clocks. Uh, and then last but, but by no means least are power solutions which range from discrete semiconductors, diodes and transistors, uh, all the way to integrated custom uh, power solutions, DC to DC converters, uh, things of that nature. Uh, if you go to the MicroSemi website, you'll see our latest uh, space brochure. You'll see this graphic in the brochure. It really just is there as a, as a sampling of some of the programs that we've supported over the 60 years that we've been supporting the space industry. So a wide variety of programs going back to 1957, and those programs include science programs, communications programs, uh, planetary exploration and landers and rovers, um, as well as remote sensing uh, for, uh, for commercial as well as for defense purposes. So remote sensing uh, serves as an interesting uh, touchstone. I've got a, uh, a graphic here of a, a, a very much simplified but still quite typical uh, remote sensing block diagram. And I just want to use this block diagram for the next minute or so uh, just to highlight the breadth of the product portfolio. Uh, so in the uh, remote sensing application, uh, we have FPGAs, uh, which are used in the signal processing data path uh, for uh, the actual uh, processing algorithms as well as for compression, storage, and transmission <coughs> of the uh, of the process data down to the ground station or to a crosslink. Uh, FPGAs also play an important role in the command and control interfacing uh, of the uh, remote sensing payload. So for example, the interface to the telemetry tracking and control system, and in the case of, of some specific types of remote sensing uh, payloads, you may need to be doing motor control, in which case the FPGA can very efficiently and effectively implement um, motor control algorithms. Uh, mixed signal parts are represented here as well. Uh, the LX7730 and LX7720 devices uh, are implemented uh, in the payload interface unit uh, for command and control uh, for telemetry acquisition and also the 7720 plays a pivotal role in motor control. Clocks and oscillators, uh, a, uh, a remote sensing payload like this uh, requires very high precision uh, timing and uh, we have a range of uh, space qualified oscillators and clocks uh, which can provide the very high precision uh, timing signals uh, for the high speed analog to digital converter, uh, also for time stamping uh, and synchronization in the data processing chain uh, through the, uh, the remote sensing payload and then also oscillators are needed uh, for the communications uh, downlink. Uh, discrete semiconductors are used in the, in the power supplies 
uh, supplying power. Uh, I didn't indicate the uh, arrows from all the power supplies going into the block diagram. It would have made it extremely complicated. Uh, so we just left it here as LDOs and discretes. Uh, but those products are available and in use in many different subsystems within the payload. And of course, uh, integrated uh, power converters, DC to D DC converters, and also very specialized custom power supplies that are used to drive uh, unusually high voltages or high currents into, for example, the sensor or into the, uh, the traveling wave tube amplifier, solid state power amplifier uh, in the uh, communications downlink. So just a quick look at some recent programs which have, uh, which have included microsemi products. Uh, so some interesting heritage that we have uh, uh, participated in here. Uh, the Rosetta mission, which uh, landed on a comet in, uh, in 2014. Uh, the Pluto New Horizons mission, which returned uh, stunning images of, uh, of Pluto uh, back in 2015. Uh, Juno entering uh, the orbit of Jupiter uh, back in 2016. Uh, the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, seven satellites which were launched over the course of 2013 through 2016. GOES-R, uh, the uh, climate and weather satellite constellation uh, launched in 2016. And then early this year in January, uh, the Iridium Next uh, constellation began its launch program with the first 10 satellites uh, which were launched in 2017. Microsemi products. Uh, featured on all of those uh, missions. So my final uh, slide here, uh, just some, some housekeeping uh, announcements. So there is a chat window uh, in the web portal uh, that you're using. Uh, our plan here is to allow a little bit of time at the end of each presentation. However, that may not always be possible. If there is time at the end of each presentation, uh, the moderator here in the room uh, in California, we'll go through the questions and ask uh, as many questions as we can fit in uh, of the presenter. If there isn't time, uh, we ask that you be patient and hold the questions uh, for the Q&A session at the end. We have allowed a 30-minute Q&A session at the end. Uh, so the presentations are being recorded, the audio is being recorded, uh, an archive will be made available, it will be available uh, on the MicroSemi uh, website uh, after the event. And to, to conclude, I just want to extend a big thank you to our partner organizations uh, who have very much helped us uh, with the organization and the funding of this event. So a big thank you to them. Uh, I'll call them out. Aldec, uh, Blue Pearl, Cobham Geisler, Cypress, uh, 3D Plus, Star Dundee, and Texas Instruments.